8. Underwater Military Museum In a bid to attract tourists to the city of Aqaba, Jordanian authorities lowered 19 decommissioned military vehicles into the Red Sea in 2019. Arranged in a tactical formation along the coral reef roughly 92 feet 28 meters underwater, the collection consists of tanks, an ambulance, a military crane, a troop carrier, a combat helicopter, an anti-aircraft battery, and several guns. The project is the brainchild of the Aqaba Special Economic Zone Authority, which has turned to wreck diving as a way to attract visitors in recent years. The tradition of deliberately scuttling vehicles also stems from the Jordanian royal family's passion for diving, which goes back generations. In 1985, the late King Abdullah ordered the sinking of a Spanish cargo vessel called the Cedar Pride. An accident had blasted a hole in the ship three years earlier, leaving it a half-submerged eyesore until the king decided to sink it to the sea bottom. An anti-aircraft tank became the second intentionally placed wreck off Aqaba in 1999. There are also a few sunken airplanes, a landing boat, and a crane barge. So if exploring waterlogged vehicles is your thing, Aqaba might be your type of place. 7. Esmeralda Shipwreck In 1498, Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama became the first European explorer to reach India by sea. Five years later, during his second voyage to the subcontinent, his armada encountered a rough storm, causing a ship called the Esmeralda to sink in the Arabian Sea off the Omani island of al Halanya, The Esmeralda was one of two ships that da Gama had left behind in the region to disrupt maritime trade between India and the Red Sea. According to a group of researchers who explored the wreck in recent years following its discovery in 1998, when it sank, it took its entire crew with it, including the captain, da Gama's uncle, Vincent Sodre. The wreck broke up in shallow waters, leaving behind very little of the actual ship, but the team that discovered the Esmeralda found a plethora of artifacts, including ancient firearms, stone cannonballs bearing Sodre's initials, and other weaponry, as well as the ship's bell, the oldest artifact of its kind ever found. They also uncovered a rare ghost coin called an Indio. Commissioned by King Manuel I of Portugal for trade with India after da Gama's first voyage, it's one of just two Indios that are known to exist. According to the researchers who carried out the expedition, the large amount of weapons found at the site reflects the brutally violent nature of da Gama's voyages, as the earliest known shipwreck from the European Age of Discovery, which predates other wrecks from the period by at least 50 years. The vessel also offers unprecedented insight into the violent and militant nature of early Portuguese seafaring expeditions. 6. Prehistoric Cemetery While searching for the megalodon teeth along Florida's Gulf Coast near Venice in 2016, a diver discovered a barnacle-encrusted object that he didn't quite recognize. He was curious enough about it to keep it, only to later realize it was a human jawbone. The diver alerted the state's archaeology department to the discovery, and the artifact was handed over to Ryan Duggins, who immediately noticed wear and tear that isn't typically seen on modern teeth. Diggins visited the dive site with some colleagues, and it wasn't long before they found more human bones. Located roughly 300 yards, 274 meters from shore at a depth of 21 feet, 6.4 meters, the remains appeared to be from a prehistoric Native American cemetery. During the last ice age, Florida's coastline extended out much further than it does today. Rising sea levels caused the state to shrink considerably, submerging numerous ancient settlements that, until recently, experts assumed had been destroyed by the forces of the sea. Experts dated the burial site to around 7,000 years ago. At the time, Hunter-gatherer tribes in Florida were just starting to settle down in more permanent villages. Duggins told National Geographic that he hoped the discovery would open researchers' minds to the possibility that there are more submerged prehistoric sites waiting to be discovered. Would you ever go deep sea diving to explore ruins underwater? Tell us in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. 5. USS Conestoga 
Built in Maryland in the early 1900s, the 170-foot, 52-meters seagoing tugboat USS Conestoga was commissioned for Navy service during World War I. It departed from California's Mare Island for assigned duty in American Samoa on March 25, 1921, under the command of Lieutenant Ernest Larkin Jones. Neither the boat nor its 56 crew members were ever seen again. When the Conestoga failed to arrive at its destination in a timely fashion, the U.S. Coast Guard launched a massive air and sea search. It was the largest mission of its kind to ever occur until the search for Amelia Earhart in 1937. The only evidence of the vessel's fate that turned up was a lifeboat that was spotted hundreds of miles off course near Manzanillo, Mexico. Its whereabouts remained one of the Navy's biggest unsolved mysteries for nearly a century. In 2009, scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration discovered an unidentified wreck sitting 200 feet, 61 meters underwater in the Greater Farallonis National Marine Sanctuary. None of its features matched any of the region's known shipwrecks. It wasn't until 2016, 95 years after the Conestoga vanished, that the team was able to confirm with certainty that it was the long-lost tugboat in question. Based on its location, it's evident that the vessel sank within a day of leaving port. The wreck was found far from Hawaii or Mexico's Baja California coast, where it was long presumed to be located. Researchers pored over records and performed an in-depth analysis of the wreck's features before concluding that it was the Conestoga. Evidence at the wreck indicates that it ran into a problem with the barge it was towing when it disappeared which also falls in line with the heavy seas and 40 mile per hour, 64.4 kilometer per hour winds that the region was experiencing that day. Experts don't think the actual towing issue caused the tug to sink. It appears as though the crew responded to the problem accordingly and tried to turn around and return to port. But as an older vessel, the Conestoga was prone to taking on water and its location in an area notorious for its shipwrecks suggests that the crew was desperately trying to reach safer waters. The wreck is protected as a military grave and has found a new purpose as an artificial habitat for marine life. 4. Ancient Megafauna Until somewhat recently, at least in geological terms, the island of Madagascar was populated with massive animals that were multiple times larger than their modern-day relatives. In one of the most rapid extinction periods known to scientists, most of them have been wiped out of existence over the last millennium. The swift demise of these creatures coincided with the arrival of humans around 2,000 years ago, but the precise causes of the massive die-off are unclear. A discovery in 2014 marked a hopeful step toward finding answers when thousands of fossilized specimens were discovered in a series of submerged caves at Simanem Pesotse National Park. Included among the initial finds were the bones of several extinct giant lemur species dating back between a few hundred and a few thousand years. The fossils included bones belonging to Archaeoindris, a giant lemur roughly the size of a modern-day gorilla, and the largest known species of its kind to ever exist. Collecting the evidence for further study was complicated, to put it mildly. Due to the complications of diving in the cave's dark, cramped confines, where the water is up to 130 feet, 39.6 meters deep. But the discoveries were well worth the effort and investment, and the team announced plans to hopefully make many more return visits and bring more bones to the surface for further study. 3. Centuries-old clothing In 2014, a group of amateur divers found a silk dress among the wreckage of a ship that sank around 1650 off the Dutch island of Texel. They brought it to the surface along with a handful of other finds, including another dress, women's toiletries, and book covers. Little is known about the ship, nicknamed the Palmwood for the type of wood it was built from, including its real name. The discovery of the items has helped bring the wreck to life, prompting curiosity among both experts and the public alike about who was on the ship, where it was going, and who owned the clothing. Corina Hordyke, who directs the museum Cop Skill, where the silk dress is on display, 
told the New York Times that its owner was likely the last person to touch it before its more recent discovery. She said that the dresses were made around 1620, about 30 years before the ship sank, and that they may have belonged to different owners. The silk dress was larger and was perhaps owned by an older woman while the other dress, which is silver, may have been a wedding gown. Both pieces were extremely expensive and would have only been worn by rich people. It's rare for clothing to survive at the bottom of an ocean for hundreds of years, making discoveries like this extremely rare. In late 2022, a pair of pants found on a wreck called the SS Central America sold for $114,000 at auction. Thought to be an early pair of Levi Strauss jeans, the pants went down with the ship off the South Carolina coast during a hurricane in 1857. The pants were recovered from a chest belonging to a veteran of the Mexican-American War from Oregon named John Demet. He survived the sinking of the Central America, but his pants weren't so lucky. It's believed that he bought the clothing during a business trip to acquire goods for his family's mercantile shop. Interestingly, the wreck is famous for the hoard of treasure it took to the bottom of the ocean. But as the trousers prove, some of its most valuable artifacts are everyday items. 2. Industry Shipwreck Of the more than 4,000 estimated wrecks that sit at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico, only one of them is a whaling vessel. Known as the Industry, the 64-foot-long, 19.5 meters vessel sank off the Louisiana coast during a sudden violent storm in 1836. The Industry was built in 1815 in Westport, Massachusetts. Manned by a 15-member crew, it operated as a whaling boat for 20 years before it met its demise during the squall, which ripped its two masts off and left the crew at the mercy of Mother Nature. Luckily, they managed to board lifeboats and were rescued by another vessel. What was left of the industry drifted for 80 miles, 129 kilometers, before plummeting 6,000 feet, 1,829 meters, to the bottom of the sea. The wreck's location eluded experts until 2022, when scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration spotted its anchors and the cauldrons that were used for rendering the whale blubber into oil. It had been spotted at least twice before, but it was only after the most recent discovery that researchers were able to confidently identify it as the industry. The Gulf of Mexico is not known as a whaling region, but it once was. Scholars believe the first commercial whaling in the area may have occurred as early as 1760. Eventually, the region's whales were overhunted to the point where those who managed to avoid being killed were driven elsewhere. One. One of the world's rarest coins. Eric Schmidt and his family were treasure hunting off Florida's Treasure Coast in 2015, when his metal detector alerted him to something sitting roughly 15 feet, 4.6 meters, underwater. For all he knew, it might be a piece of submerged garbage. But to his surprise, it turned out to be a 40-foot, 12.2 meters gold chain and a hoard of 52 gold coins from a fleet of Spanish galleons that wrecked 300 years earlier in 1715. This particular shipwreck, the Capitana, was among 11 vessels that sank in the region during a hurricane. It was en route from Cuba to Spain when it plunged to the bottom of the Atlantic, taking the Queen of Spain's jewels and 3.5 million pesos with it. The most valuable coin among the treasure trove was a single royal made for King Philip V of Spain. Nicknamed a Tricentennial Royal and dated 1715, the year the ship sank, it's thought to be worth up to $500,000. Some sources say that only a few dozen fleet-related royals have ever been found, and no more than a handful are thought to exist among the 1715 sunken fleet. The total value of the hull was estimated to be around $1 million an arguably small fraction of the $400 million worth of treasure that went down with the ship, but a fascinating and impressive discovery in its own right. Schmidt and his family uncovered the cache of valuables on behalf of a company owned by Brent Brisbane, who owns exclusive salvage rights to the wreck. By law, the treasure belonged to the U.S. government, but Brisbane and the Schmidts were rewarded generously for the discovery with a portion of the booty. Thanks for watching. Have you ever found anything amazing underwater?
Tell us about it in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.